amazingly enough, and there's no pleasing some people, amazingly enough, some people actually say, look, not only do I not want to see floor standing speakers, and not only do I not want to see a three-in-one speaker, and not only do I not want to see in-wall speakers, they don't want to see any speakers. Whether it's in-wall, whether it's closed box, whether it's a nice 3200 floor stander, they don't want to see anything. So that leaves really just one option, and that option is to ceiling mount a speaker. Ceiling speakers are great. When you go to your local mass merchant and they say that there's a special in aisle seven, that announcement is coming out of a ceiling speaker. And so, okay, it's fine. It sounds good. It's nice, you know, for non-critical listening. But if you're going to put in a high fidelity system and a theater system and you need a left speaker and a center speaker and a right speaker and everything needs to sound as good as it can, ceiling speakers up until now haven't been the best choice because they just don't have the correct sound and the correct directionality and the correct design to really deliver first-rate theater sound until now. What we've done, because we're Atlantic and it's our job, and this is what we do, we look at things differently. What we've done is we've come up with a product we call the In-Ceiling Theater System 6 LCR. LCR stands for left, center, right, because we think that this is the first product, the first ceiling speaker that's really good enough for serious, no excuses, no compromise, theater sound use. It's a ceiling speaker. You can see that the woofer is angled so that the woofer will fire down towards the listening area instead of straight down. But remember I was just talking about the in-wall closed box and how most in-wall speakers use woofers that handle too much of the sound spectrum. The woofers go up too high in frequency and the tweeters don't go low enough in frequency. So the woofers beam their sound like a flashlight. Well, it's bad enough if the woofer beams its sound like a flashlight when it comes out from the wall straight ahead. Can you imagine how bad it is if a speaker is mounted in the ceiling and the woofer is beaming all that mid-range sound like a flashlight? It's going to go straight down. It's never going to reach the listening area. So we've angled it so that it reaches the listening area. But we've done more than that. We've incorporated the same technology low resonance tweeter in the 6LCR that I just showed you in the in-wall closed box. And that enables the tweeter to spread the sound out in the mid-range, lower treble and upper treble, all over the listening area so that when you mount this in the ceiling, the woofer is angled towards the listening area. It's only handling the part of the spectrum that the woofer is able to disperse widely. And it crosses over at a low crossover point to the tweeter because it's our special low resonance tweeter that handles more of the sound spectrum. And the tweeter is then able to really spread the sound out beautifully all around the listening area. So unlike a conventional ceiling speaker that is just not well suited to theater use, the 6LCR is suited to critical theater use. And it's a very, very important speaker for those customers who just don't want to see speakers in front of them. So, so far we've looked at things that really solve problems. We've looked at the 6 LCR, we've looked at the FS4000, we've looked at the in-wall closed box. We've looked at products that really address the way people use sound products in their home and the way that people really want their products to operate on their behalf. They don't want to fight with them. They don't want to put up with them. They don't want to accept things that look bad. They don't want products that don't really address their needs of today. There's probably no product that is more of a necessary evil in people's minds than the subwoofer. Now, subwoofers are essential. If you don't have a good subwoofer, in a home theater or music system, then you haven't got great bass and you haven't got really powerful low end and when you're watching a, an exciting 
action movie and there are explosions or someone drives a truck into a bridge and it explodes and you know it has this great rumble or the Death Star explodes, it has this great low frequency power to it. You need a subwoofer. Subwoofers are great. Subwoofers are what bring drama and impact and really seem to set so-so systems apart from really great home theater systems. And because subwoofers sound so good and because subwoofers are such an integral part of what's important to the sound of a home theater system, of a home entertainment system. People put up with what they hate the most. They put up with that horrible black box. Ah, if only I could get rid of that black box in my living room, I'd be so happy. Now about five years ago, six years ago, Atlanta came up with a great solution for it. We have an in-wall subwoofer, and if you're building a brand new theater and your walls are open, you can put our brand new in-wall subwoofer in right from the word go. It's THX certified, it has external amplifiers, it's great. It's a great in-wall subwoofer, you'll never see it. It doesn't clutter up your room, it's terrific. But in all honesty, it's kind of expensive. And in even greater honesty, it's made for those rooms that are being built as theaters for the first time. If you're building a house for the first time, put in our in-wall sub. If you're finishing off a basement and framing in the walls around a previously unfinished basement and the walls are open, put in our in-wall sub. That way you'll never see the subwoofer, you'll get THX certified level base, it'll be fabulous. However, that doesn't address the great majority of home theater installations. The great majority of you customers out there are putting home theater systems in your living room and you just want a good sounding product that doesn't look lousy in your living room. The walls are already made. You can't start cutting out sheetrock and installing expensive subwoofers. You don't even know what's behind one given wall section. Is there a wiring there? Is there plumbing there? Is there a, you know, some kind of a, of a, of a trip wire over there? You just don't know. So, Putting in an in-wall subwoofer after the fact is not even an option. So most people have accepted the necessary evil, the necessary evil of the black box. All right, I'll close my eyes, I'll pretend it's not there, you know, the black box. Okay, that wasn't good enough for Atlantic because at Atlantic we like to solve problems. We like to look at real world problems, we like to understand how customers really want to use products. We like to solve that problem and have it sound great and fit into their lifestyle. So here's what we did. And this is one of the most ingenious products. It's so simple and so spot on and so good that we asked ourselves, why didn't we think of this years ago? Thankfully, <laughs> it seems like no one else has thought of it either. So this is a real nice product. And, uh, if you look over there in the corner, you probably didn't even notice it. But we have something called the 10 CSB corner subwoofer. And the corner subwoofer mounts in the corner. If you can see the shape of the cabinet, it's designed to snug right into a corner, out of sight, definitely not out of ear. Corner mounting is a great location for a subwoofer from an acoustic standpoint. As I've mentioned before about boundaries, each boundary reinforces the base. And when you corner mount a subwoofer, you've got the acoustic reinforcement, almost like acoustic mirrors, if you will, of three intersecting wall boundaries, the floor and two walls. You could think of the subwoofer as if it were a light bulb. And if the light bulb was out in the middle of the room, you'd get the light from one light bulb. If the light bulb was at the floor wall intersection, you'd get the reflection from two surfaces, the floor and the wall. But you put that same light bulb, that acoustic light bulb, that base light bulb, if you will, into the corner, and now you've got a triple reflection. So it really reinforces the base. It's a great location acoustically for base. And because we know that it's going in the corner, we adjust the electronics in its amplifier to compensate and optimize it specifically for corner mounting. Think of it. A traditional box subwoofer has an amplifier into it, built into it. 
and you could locate it here, you could locate it there, you could locate it there, you could locate it anywhere. And as a manufacturer, we don't know exactly where you're going to put this thing. So there's no way that we can precisely optimize the electronics that are built into the subwoofer amplifier based on where you're going to put it because we don't know where you're going to put it. So it's a little bit of a compromise. We'll give you the best placement instructions we can. We hope that you follow our placement guidelines, but if you don't, with a, with a box subwoofer, you're a little bit at odds between where you're going to place it and its best, best possible sound. With a corner subwoofer, we know where you're going to put it. It's a corner subwoofer. It's shaped and designed to go in the corner. We know that that's where you're putting it. So we optimize it for that location, and it sounds great in that location. It's a 180 watt amplifier. It's a down-firing 10-inch super heavy-duty bass driver. It just puts out clear, strong, undistorted bass like no tomorrow. And, and the nice thing about this enclosure is that there's no visible grill. The driver is down-firing. The enclosure itself is painted in a matte satin black finish. It's painted. You can put primer on it and then you can paint it any color you desire. You can paint it to blend right in. You can paint it to match the wallpaper. You can even paint a thin strip along the bottom to emulate the wall molding and then paint it a different color on top. You can even, breaks my heart to tell you this, but you could even take the logo off and paint it and the thing would absolutely disappear in your room. Nice thing about it is it's a totally stealth subwoofer that's acoustically optimized for where it's going to be and you don't have to cut the walls and you don't have to worry about a non-optimal location looking at a big ugly black box. It's just such a great solution. So if you took a, a set of in-ceiling 6 LCRs and a corner sub or an FS4000 beneath your plasma and a corner sub it's just such a nice system because it blends right into the room. It sounds terrific. You've got boundary compensation controls. You've got electronics that are optimized for corner placement in the subwoofer. And you virtually don't see it at all. It's absolutely great. So acoustically, it's terrific. And it fits right in for how people want to use products in their home. OK, two more items. And then I'll leave you alone for a while because this has been a lot to absorb. But uh, two more items I want to talk to you about. So far, I've spoken an awful lot about products that you use in your home theater. And we make a lot of great products for home theater, for whole house audio. You can use our ceiling speakers in every room in the house. Um, you can use our small satellite subwoofer systems for secondary systems or for vacation homes. But there's one thing all of them have in common. They're all indoor loudspeakers. Well, you know, Atlantic makes great sounding products. And I think that you're going to want to take that great Atlantic sound outside. If you have a deck, if you do barbecues in the summer, if you have people over on summer evenings for cocktail parties or to watch the Red Sox lose another heartbreaking game, you're going to want sound outside. And because of that, we came up with the outdoor loudspeaker AW424. Now the 424 is not a normal outdoor loudspeaker. It is an unconventional, we think better by far than average outdoor loudspeaker. First thing about the 424 that you notice is that it's made out of a polypropylene plastic. Polypropylene is a very dense, acoustically inert plastic. Most plastic outdoor speakers, when you wrap, they they tend to sound and feel like inexpensive airplane models that you used to buy at the drugstore because they're made out of what they call styrene plastic or, or ABS plastic. It's that really inexpensive material. It costs a lot more to make a, a product out of polypropylene because it's a, it's a mineral-filled, very dense plastic, very rugged. I mean, it withstands UV, ultraviolet, and it withstands all kinds of temperature extremes. It's a very non-brittle strong material, but it's also a better material acoustically. So we use it because it's better. It's more expensive, so 
I don't get a raise this year because my money is going into the enclosure of the 424. But seriously, I mean, it's, it's really good material. It's a double woofer system, which means twice the power handling of a normal outdoor speaker, which has a single woofer system. Someone once said to me, you know something? Outdoors, outdoors is a big room. And they were right, outdoors is a big room. So speakers need to be able to handle some power because you tend to drive them a little harder when they're outside than when they're inside because there's no walls and ceiling and floors to reflect the sound back to the listening area. You know, only your neighbors really hear the sound once you, once you start cranking these things because the sound just goes out outdoors. Outdoors is a big room, so the speakers need to be rugged. It's a one-handed mounting system. The way the mounting brackets are done is that there's actually a channel that's cut into this, and you can just slide the speaker onto the mounting bracket after you mount the bracket onto the side of the house. So you're not standing up 20 feet above the ground on a ladder worrying about trying to find the threaded insert on the post in some blind mounting situation. It's a very, very easy mounting situation. And the one thing that we seem to get the most positive reinforcement on is something that's so minor. The logo rotates so that if the speaker is vertical, the A of Atlantic reads correctly. But if you mount the speaker sideways, this drives people crazy. So the logo rotates correctly so that no matter what orientation you have the speaker, the logo always looks right. So very high power handling, very good material. One other not so minor detail, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I would think that if you're doing an outdoor speaker as a manufacturer, one of the things you'd want that outdoor speaker to be is weatherproof and waterproof. That seems to be kind of the first requirement of an outdoor speaker. And our outdoor speaker is sealed. It's an acoustic suspension design. It's totally sealed. It's airtight. Don't ask me why, because I haven't got the answer. But there are actually some outdoor speakers out there that are ported. They have actual ports or channels drilled into the front baffle that allows hummingbirds and hornets and water and all manner of obstructions to get inside the speaker and mess things up. I don't know why they're like that, but I would think that a good outdoor speaker should be weatherproof and waterproof and sealed. And not only does it sound good when it's an acoustic suspension speaker, but it just makes more sense for an outdoor speaker to be that way. So ours is like that. We're almost done. Everybody can take a breath. I've got one more thing I want to tell you about. I want to tell you about another product that solves problems. It's just a great product for a multiple use situation. This is called the Atlantic in ceiling theater system, ICTS 8.3. It has a smaller brother called the 6.3, but all the comments I say will apply equally to the 8.3 as well as the 6.3. You see it's dual tweeters. The dual tweeters can operate either in phase, that means both tweeters are moving together, and in that case it's a very high quality music speaker, nicely suited to whole house audio, put a set of these in the ceiling in every room and it, it just sounds great. It's also a particularly good solution if you flip this switch from normal to surround. And in the surround mode, these two tweeters go out of phase with each other. In other words, one goes in when the other is moving out. And that creates what we call a null field, so that right nearby the speaker, you can't tell where the sound is coming from. Sound gets out away from the speaker, begins to reflect all around the room, and very effectively fills the listening area with non-directional ambient sound, which is exactly what you want for the rear channels in a home theater system. So for those situations where you don't want to see side wall mounted surround speakers, use the 6.3 or the 8.3 as surround speakers mounted in the ceiling with the tweeter in the surround position. 
and it makes a wonderful, wonderful situation for surround speakers that you can't see at all. The other thing you can do with this, which is a very interesting problem-solving solution, is since it's a dual voice coil woofer, you can actually have one tweeter handle one channel of information, and one of the voice coils in the woofer handles that channel of information, and the other tweeter handles the other channel of information, with the other voice coil of the woofer handling the right channel. So if you've got a small area where space or budget is just not appropriate for two speakers, such as, as an example, um, a master dressing area or master closet, and only room for one speaker, only budget for one speaker. You can put one 6.3 or 8.3 in the ceiling, and that single unit can handle both channels of a stereo signal. One tweeter in the woofer handles one channel, the other tweeter in the woofer handles the other channel. So it beautifully solves the problem of how do we get high quality sound in a space challenged situation where two speaker installation is not appropriate. So high quality regular speaker, beautiful surround sound speaker for the ceiling, or high quality single point stereo speaker. It's what we call tri-mode because you can use it in any one of three modes. So those are some highlights of some of the problem solving products that we have developed for customers at Atlantic Technology.